Hello, this is Mike Hanron. You're very welcome to part two in this trilogy of shows on the songs from the War of Independence 1920 in County Clare. I'll speak on this one a little bit about the national situation in 1920 because the war really took on a different uh, level of violence right across the country. Uh, atrocities after atrocities, there was uh, attacks, counter-attacks, there was a lot of death, there was a, a lot of injuries, uh, destruction, and quite a lot of these have been recorded in songs that I found. Some of the songs you, you, you know and uh, know pretty well. There was a, the tragedy of the Scarf Martyrs, which was so elegantly put together by Christy Moore, so I have no intention of trying to emulate Christy's wonderful version. The, the words of the song actually go through the, the story quite well. I just think the first verse was um, The dreadful news through Ireland has spread from shore to shore. Such a deed no living man has ever heard before. The deeds of Cromwell in his time I'm sure no worse could do than them black and tans that murdered those four youths in Killaloo. And Christie has a beautiful version, it's available. Uh, I would urge you to go and have a listen to it. You can listen to it up on, online or, or, or download the track. It's a beautiful song. They came from faraway places. Another song that's very famous uh, from this period is Kevin Barry. We all know Kevin Barry. We all have a different version of it. We've heard it several times. In fact, I, as a young fella, I sang it at a flair keol in Tuna in County Clare, I think I might have been about 11 or 12, and I got second in the flair and I got a medal. Now, I'm not sure if there was only two in the competition or three, I'm not sure. But uh, I got the medal anyway. But that was really the last of my ballad singing days because around that time I also discovered Leonard Cohen and that was put paid to my ballad singing. I took on a different uh, journey on my, on my music for a long time. And oddly enough, uh, Leonard Cohen himself sang uh, uh, Kevin Barry in Dublin in 1972 and it's available up there uh, online if you want to have a listen. It's an interesting version of it and his introduction is a bit skewed but it's really beautiful. I think he was he was definitely moved by the civil rights movement here in Ireland. And Padder of course is a Clareman. Uh, he's one of my most interesting characters that I've, I've come across. And uh, the, the part three of the trilogy, I think I'll try and dedicate some, some more time and energy to him and his life. Uh, fascinating character. But uh, Barry worked closely with him in Dublin. And although he was the youngest person to die from the Irish side, uh, it is reported that, that the, the three people who were killed in the raid were young men as well. One as young as 15. And I think the, the policy from the British at the time were that they were, they were looking for people to enlist and it was illegal to um, employ people younger than, I think it was 18, maybe, I don't know. But it's certainly not 15. The hour has come to strike a blow for freedom and the right. Proudly gladly In reality, the British had the power and, and the might to crush the war. Um, the volunteers were, were down to their last few weapons. And um, it was amazing how they organised themselves to, to take on such a potent force and how it spread through the community. And, and again, I hear this in the songs that, are, that I've come across, that songs are they're kind of rousing songs, getting the people to, to gather up and... and, and and take control. There's a, a great line in one of the songs from one of the ballads I read about uh, Rhineen. The Rhineen ambush itself was a kind of a turning point, I think, in, in the Clare War. Uh, there was quite a lot of uh, British and uh, auxiliaries and black and tans involved in it, and a few of the volunteers, the IRA volunteers, uh, withheld. There was injuries, but then what happened afterwards was the, the reprisals were, were cruel. There was I think it was five civilians, from what I read, was five civilians killed. There were several villages burned uh, to the ground, houses destroyed. 
so it was a turning point. Um, so I'll, I'll sing you this song, I'll sing it unaccompanied if you don't mind. A song from the late Tom Lenehan, and I will do my best to sing it, but uh, I could never match the man's amazing performance. The Ambush at Rhineen. Come all you gallant Irishmen, come listen for a while. I'll sing to you the praises of the sons of Aaron's Isle. Tis an awful, awful ambush, I'll have you to beware. That happened in Rhineen, in a spot in County Clare. Our boys, they waited patiently, with an eye but sharp and keen. They waited for these lorries to return to Rhineen. They were scouted once they sighted them without the least delay and signalled to their comrades to get ready and prepare. Their comrades they got ready without the least delay and signalled to their scouts again to let them come their way. Oh, the black and tans they came along in lorries as you know and met our boys upon the road which gave them a heavy blow. They fought upon the highway, man to man, you know, with shotguns and revolvers against armoured cars and so. The black and tans put up their hands and the peelers too likewise when they saw determined faces upon our Irish boys. And so now to conclude and finish, as I think it's nearly time, and all the gallant Irish men together should unite. Together should assemble and gather all you can and have another ambush soon to fight the Black and Tans. My friend Senan Lillis um, sent me this song about an attack on the RSE barracks in October in Cura Clare. Uh, he says it was the first to be burned down, so I'm not going to argue with anybody from Cora Clare. Um, the song relates to a local volunteer, a fella called uh, Patrick Burke from Carew, outside Cora Clare. Uh, Patrick was part of the A Company, West Clare IRA. Senan sent me this great photograph of the barracks after the burning, and it shows the slogans daubed all over the walls. Patrick was later arrested and sent to... to Brixton Prison, I think it was in, in England, and he died from pneumonia. And they say it was because he was hosed daily in his cell. And as a result, this led, led to his very untimely death. He was only 23 when he died. <laughs> It was a calm summer's evening in a small hamlet suite. The peasant folks gathered in the quiet village street to discuss the day's happenings, the weather and toil, as was ever the custom of the sons of the soil. Twas the calm before thunder, too peaceful to last. When out from the barracks, the soldiers marched past. Their rifles all gleaming in the soft summer sun. There off and away goes a youth on the run. With a cheer and a bound, our hero pace, while the sons of the empire all eager give chase, led on by O'Reilly, that black R.I.C., to capture this youth, determined was he. But the youth steps manly, handsome and tall. Down by the green hills and over the wall Like a hare that is hunted He sped like the wind And leaves his pursuers following at will 
His onlooking comrades in their joy raise a cheer. For the brave looking youth, he knows not a fear. The soldiers now stand and their rifles prepare. A fierce crash of folly is heard through the air. For over the hills our hero then flew. In the hills of Nakera, he bid them adieu. I have now sung his praises, his name I'll not tell you. Tis enough he be known as the Rake of Karoo. Burning of Quilty. Oh, the burning of Quilty, you all know it well. When the barrack took fire, where the peelers did dwell. The flames bursted out, sure it was a great sight. There were women and children all there through the night. Poor Michael Dwyer, he got a great fright. He called on his wife for to rescue his life. His daughter ran out and she roared no more. Blessed light, blessed light, keep away from our door. And then Michael Kenny looked out through the glass. He saw Patsy Scully outside at the cross. Oh Patsy, oh Patsy, take out the poor ass. And the whole blessed place, it's all in the mess. Poor Mikey Dwyer came down on the scene. He ran to the cross and he called Jack Cooney. My house will be burned before it will be seen. And my fool of a son is up there in my knee. Then Paddy Shannon threw out his old rags and he stuck his poor missus into a bag. The burning, the burning, it started too soon. To be burning all night until next afternoon. Then Paddy Healy came out in the flames. He could see no one there but the peelers he'll blame. He went to Tom Clancy and told him the same. Be damned, says Tom Clancy, tis now we want rain. Father McGannon came down to the gate. He says to the boys, that's an awful disgrace. For this poor old barracks is in a terrible state. It's no harm to be banished and gone from this place. And now to conclude and to finish my song. I hope you'll all tell me my verses are wrong. For this old barracks is no harm to be gone. Many poor fellow was shoved in their wrong. faraway places to march on a freedom trail they sang a new revolution from the songs their fathers made <laughs>